Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. We all love to stay connected with our old friends and make some new ones along the way too. That's right, by video message, phone, or just a visit, there are so many ways to keep in touch. How about you join us as we take a look at some of the interesting friends we've made and get in touch with some former hosts. You're not alone. You're in the zone. So hang up the phone and get in the zone. Get in the zone, the Friday zone. You're in the zone, the Friday zone. Hi everybody and welcome back into the zone. Today we're going to revisit some friends we have met and get connected with some former hosts. I love getting in contact with old friends. There are so many ways to find out what's been going on with a buddy. That's right, Emily. There's your phone, mm -hmm. of course, email, social networks, and yes. even video chat. Video chat, Taylor, seriously, that is my favorite thing. I recently just got to video chat with a friend. I was able to give her my opinion on her new hairdo. She helped me pick out an outfit for my day and uh -huh. get this. She even walked around her new apartment with a webcam and I was able to get my own virtual tour without even being there. Let me tell you that a phone call could never do that. Technology is amazing. It is. Former host Katie Sullivan actually sent all of us a video chat message using Skype. Check out this video as we connect with our old friend Katie here in the zone. Hi Taylor, hi Emily, it's great to connect with you and Friday Zone viewers, I've missed you. Uh, most recently, uh, back in 2009, I moved to Seattle and since last November, I've been a freelance segment producing for Biz Kids LLP. It's an independent production company out in Seattle, Washington, and they actually produce the show called Biz Kids, which is aired on public television stations nationwide. So I've been segment producing and meeting young entrepreneurs all over the country, researching stories and setting up, uh, you know, filmings with them. Staying connected with people is very important to me because I've lived in three different states. I'm from upstate New York myself, I've lived in Indiana and I've also been living in Washington state. So I have friends and family all over the country. It's important for me to stay connected with them. So I feel like I know what's going on in their lives and they know what's going on with me too. I think in the studio, one of my favorite times was having a whole bunch of kids come in and they were playing Quidditch. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and I think it's amazing how much impact an author can have, especially in real life. And so bringing Quidditch to life for Muggles in the studio in the Friday Zone set was pretty incredible, a lot of fun, and I know that our referee took a couple, uh, you know, balls to the face and to the body as he was refereeing, but it was a lot of fun to see the kids playing right on the set, pretty inspiring. Uh, in the field, I would have to say that one of my favorite moments is when I was at the Indianapolis Zoo, and I had the diving skin on, and I was in the water with the two dolphins, Nova and Kimo, the bottlenose dolphins. Throwing them fish after their tricks was pretty amazing, and it's not often that a girl in Indiana can be in the water with dolphins within this state. Friday Zone viewers, what you may not realize is that a lot of things happen behind the scenes before the show actually is taped or takes place. And one of my favorite moments was when we were doing kind of our holiday episode. We were making gingerbread houses out of graham crackers. And unfortunately, the frosting, the royal icing, was not setting up properly and it wasn't getting hard enough, fast enough, and the graham crackers were not sticking together on the houses we were making for the brownie troop. So what you don't know, or which I hope you don't know, is that we actually had to hot glue some of those graham cracker houses together that the brownies were working on. So they weren't necessarily edible, but they were definitely going to stay together. Thank you for watching Friday Zone viewers. It's been great to connect with you and let's stay in touch in the future. Wow, Katie sure did have a bunch of fun here in the zone. Her time at the zoo reminded me of one of my favorite moments at the Indianapolis Zoo too. It's when I met my good friend Brutus the Walrus. He showed off some awesome suction power as he sucked a whole fish through a tube. It was so interesting to learn lots of things from his trainer. But the best moment I had was when I got to visit the, with the Friday Zone field crew to Holiday World and Splash and Safari. I met Leah Cook and had a blast on all of the rides. How about you come with me as we check out this Friday Zone flight. Flashback.
hot outside, but the water was cold at Holiday World and Splash and Safari in Santa Claus, Indiana, as Emily and fourth generation cook, Leah Cook, suited up to ride the newest member of the Splash and Safari family, the Wildebeest. Hey, it's Emily here at the Wildebeest in Holiday World with Leah Cook, fourth generation of the Cook family. Leah, tell me something special about the Wildebeest. The Wildebeest is actually the world's longest water coaster. In the world? In the world. In the entire world. Well, hey, we're about to ride this thing. Favorite part about it is? Everything. Everything, everything. <laughs> I'm about to check it out and I will tell you what my favorite part is after we're done. The Wildebeest is easily top on the visitors list to ride and it was clear to see its favoritism because at opening time there was already a line waiting. Emily and Leah nestled into their inner tube and equipped with waterproof camera started up the water coaster. Here we are, Emily and Leah. I'm on the Wildebeest for the first time. Oh yes, Friday Zone, we're about to take you from my point of view on the Wildebeest. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Leah and I are ready. We'll let you tell us how you like it. See ya. And man, do you get wet on this ride. And we're done, and we are soaking wet. We hope you had a fun time on the Wolf Week. I know Lee and I did, so we'll see you on the next ride. Viewers, we just got off the Wolf Beast, and Leah, oh my goodness. We are soaking wet, obviously, <laughs> but I have to say, this is the longest ride I've ever been on. How long is the Wolf Beast? Well, it's two and a half minutes from start to finish. Two and a half minutes, all right. I knew it was long, and I'm sorry it took us forever to get back, but it was so much fun, and Leah, I'm dying to ask, how did we go so fast? Well, on each hill, there are uh, what they call linear induction motors, which basically means it's a big magnet that shoots you up the hill. Really? Because we were flying. It was like, pew, pew. Like, the conveyor belt took us up. But hey, we go even faster on the ride itself. And you'll have to check it out in Holiday World yourself. So the Wildebeest down. We'll let everyone else get a chance to ride it. And we're off to the next ride. We'll see you there. Holiday World and Splash and Safari was not always packed with this many amusements. But it was not short on fun, second generation Pat Cook explains. The history of the park is that in 1946, my father-in-law, Lewis Cook, father of nine children, came to this little town called Santa Claus. And he thought, what a shame that there's nothing in a town named Santa Claus for little children to do. And my father was here also. So those two really were responsible for starting a little park called Santa Claus Land. No admission. And the Mother Goose train that sits on the hill still today is still going in our park. It is the original ride that was here when they started in 1946. However, if the water coaster ride isn't really your style, then you can always relax on the lazy river, cool off under the number of water fountains at Kima Bay, experience the thrill of being dropped into a high banked bowl, or drop into the huge blue and pink funnel. Splash and Safari has a little bit for every member of the family. But you can't just stop there. Once you have cooled off in Splash and Safari, then venture on out into Holiday World, where you can experience a top 10 roller coaster, The Raven, the number one wooden roller coaster, The Voyage, or for those of you who don't quite meet the height requirement, try The Howler. But that's not all for the younger crowd. In the very entrance, right after you get into the entrance of the park, there's an area called Rudolph's Reindeer Ranch. And it has rides that have been here for a long, long time. A children's carousel. We have some airplanes and some rockets. And then a what we call a double shot, which is a ride that goes up and down that, again, older kids and parents can ride with them. And if you need to just sit back and relax with a free fountain drink, then you can head over to the Hoosier Celebration Theater and catch a show. We have three shows and then some shows just in the park as it's such. One of them is a country show, which is just great. It's a wonderful show. We have Vinyl Days, which is sort of rock and roll and just an exciting show. We also have a, um, a Christian music show, uh, contemporary Christian music, which our guests really enjoy. Top on our summer list here in the zone are water parks, and Splash and Safari is at the tip top of that list. Whether you want to float all day, get a thrill from the slides, or wind your way around all the rides at Holiday World, this park truly does have everything to make your summer fun.
cleanest you'll ever go to. We are the friendliest. Our people are very friendly. We give you excellent service and we care very much about your safety. So you'll have a good time at Holiday World and Splash and Safari where we are number one for family fun. I gotta tell you, that seemed like a whole lot of fun. Honestly, it was so fun. And I was able to meet a good friend along the way. And hopefully with technology, her and I will be able to stay in touch. You know, Emily, the way I like to keep in touch with friends and family is with social networking sites. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends and family are on there, and it's an easy way for me to see what's going on in their lives. You know, it is a nice way to stay in touch with friends and family, but for me, social networking sites like Facebook allow me to not only keep in touch with my friends and family, but also make friends with people that have the same interests as I do. And for viewers at home, parents can log on to Facebook and like our page and to see what's going on here right in the zone. Emily? I have a surprise for you. You do? What is it? Your old co-host Chad popped onto our <gasps> Facebook page and left us a video message to let us know what he's been up to. Wow. Let's check it out. Hey Friday Zone viewers, it's Chad, former co-host of the Friday Zone. You guys should remember me. I'm here in beautiful Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. It is amazing. The B-Boys coming into the Friday Zone was one of my favorite moments, not just because I got to have my friends on the show, and I felt like I was contributing something more than just being a pretty face that talks all the time. But uh, I also thought it was kind of a very fun form of expression that doesn't get a lot of coverage or a lot of people see unless you're in certain cities or you happen to have friends who do it. So I, I hope that was kind of an interesting experience for all the viewers. I really did enjoy uh, getting to go out in the field. The zoo was excellent because I will probably never get that close to an elephant ever again. And it was really great. I actually was slightly terrified of just not startling the elephant, but just maybe misstepping and actually having him step on me. But he was a wonderful animal. My family's all the way in Indiana, and I had to try really hard to keep in contact with them. So my friends here in California are really, really important to me. They're my new family, basically. Social networking sites are really helpful for me because even in California, for example, a couple mile distance with traffic and the way our city is laid out, it's a really hard to go see someone who's even five or ten miles away. It takes a couple hours just to get that far if traffic's bad. So, with like, you know, websites and social networking, I can kind of talk to them and I can keep in touch. I want to say goodbye to you guys. I miss you all very much. I wish I could be on the show still. Uh, I miss you, Emily. I miss you, Taylor. See you guys. Chad, the beard's looking great. And you know, that really reminded me of my first time here in the zone after he left. How was your time here? Well, I gotta say, Emily, I was a little nervous first coming through that door. You were? Yeah, I mean, it was a big deal for me. I had been watching the show since I was a kid, and so to come out here and, and be a host, you know, it kinda was a, a lot to take in. And, and the first thing I, I, I know I noticed when I came in was all the colors on the set. Oh. Because it's, mm -hmm. the, the set's amazing, and, the, and then the couch and all these great things. And oh, there we are. Oh, there I am. Look at me. Look how Beardless, young we look. Young. Beardless, yeah. <laughs> I know, I've been here so long now. I'm growing a beard I'm so old. But uh, yeah, it was a, a great experience, and you were so great to work with, and, and you were really nice and, and helping me uh, kind of... Jump right into it was the show. a smooth transition for me from Chad to you, and honestly, Taylor, you've been doing such a great job. Well, thank you. I think the colors only add to our colorful personalities together. But you know, I've gotten to talk to you guys about my favorite moment here in the zone. How about you tell me about yours? Hmm, Emily, that would have to be when I met up with Travis Finsel and his hot air balloons. He showed us how hot air balloons use air pressure to fly. Take a look in this Friday Zone flashback. Hey guys, I'm here with Travis Vinsel, and we are going to learn a little bit about how hot air balloons work. So Travis, do you want to get us started over here? Sure, we'll take everything out of the van and get going. Great, awesome. Taylor and Travis muscled the hot air balloon equipment out of the van and onto the ground to get ready for the flight. The basket of a hot air balloon is made out of wicker, and we were a little curious about the durability of this wicker basket. A woven basket has no seams, and anything that you put together, the weak point is the seam. Right. But since it's woven, there are no seams, okay. so it's very strong and there's no weak point. Uh, since it's wicker and woven, it is actually flexible. So you can see like this, it can move around, uh -huh. which means when we hit the ground or when the, whatever we're doing during inflation, it's, not, it's flexible, it gives a little right, bit, which right. is great. So it takes a person about a month to weave one of these baskets. Wow, that's so, impressive. If you're anything like us, I bet you're wondering how hot air balloons fly. 
This is our burner system, which is a redundant system. We only really need one burner to fly. Okay. But we have two of them here, and the fuel comes up through the, through the burners. Uh -huh. And what it does is it goes through these coils. And when it goes through the coils, we take the liquid propane and turn it into a vapor. Okay. And therefore, it has much more pressure. And then that flame comes out of this, and that's what heats air up. Once the burner is hooked up and secured with heavy-duty carabiners, it was time for the main event, the balloon. The main portion of a hot air balloon is made up of nylon, which Travis assures us is very durable. But did you know hot air balloons did not always look and feel like this one? The last 50 years have been modern ballooning with nylon uh -huh. and, and liquid propane. Prior to that, um, for about 150 years right. while ballooning was around, uh, they just built a fire under a big bag and would cut it loose and up wow. the balloon would go. Once the balloon is spread out, the balloon needs to be filled 75% with cold air before it can be inflated with hot air. Travis's daughter Molly assisted Taylor in holding the balloon's main opening to allow airflow, and this proved to be a very tedious task. Once the balloon was at 75% inflation, we had to see for ourselves what it was like to stand inside a 90,000 cubic foot balloon. Once we stand the balloon up, the pressure inside the balloon is, is greater pressure than the outside because it's hot air, okay. um, but it's less dense, and that's the reason it rises. Wow, yeah, this is amazing. And then it was time for the burners. In a hot air balloon, a gas burner is used to heat air to the temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Since hot air is lighter and less dense than the cool air around the balloon, the heated air causes the whole balloon to rise. When the air inside the balloon cools down, or when the hot air is let out, that's when the balloon goes down. So whenever we take off, we're totally at the mercy of the wind. So we just, the winds drift us wherever they drift us. Yeah. Um, and uh, we can change our direction a little bit because usually at different altitudes there's different winds. And then uh, we look for a nice big field or a playground or something like this to come down and land. Despite our best efforts, the wind was just too strong to inflate the balloon entirely. So unfortunately, we could not soar the open skies. Travis, however, being a balloonist for many years, has flown on hundreds of flights from coast to coast. I've flown all across the United States, pretty much coast to coast. Um, I've flown in central Mexico. Um, but, you know, when it really comes down to it, southern Indiana is a great place to fly. Well, how exactly do you pack this thing back up? Well, what we'll do here is we will stretch the balloon out, squeeze the air all out of it, okay. and then we'll put it back in that bag. And if you guys will give me a hand, yeah, uh, we'll definitely. get it done in about five minutes. No problem. Sometimes you just need to use some unconventional methods to get things done. One, two, three. Our balloon-filled day had to come to an end. We packed up the balloon in the bag and then in the van, and last but not least, the wicker basket and burners. So Friday Zone viewers, if we have you soaring through the air with excitement, Travis has some information for you. They can visit our website, tjvballoons.com or vinsel.com. You can get there and you can see lots of pictures and videos and learn more about what hot air balloon is all like and maybe even buy a ride. Fantastic, thank you so much. Thank you, it was a pleasure. And thank all of you guys for coming out here and watching us with Travis and his hot air balloons and we'll see you back in Studio 6. Thanks Taylor. Did you know that probably one of the best ways to stay connected with a friend is just a simple visit? So I would like to welcome back into the zone today my former co-host Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Emily. Hi, Friday Zone viewers. So glad you're back. Good to see it's you. It's so good to be back. So, Gabby, tell us about what you've been up to since you've been in the zone. Well, I've just been working on finishing up my degree in mm -hmm. philosophy and political science. Ooh. And this summer, uh, I went back home to California. And as you know, Chad lives in California yes, now. Yes, exactly. So I got to see him a lot. So re reconnecting with him was really cool. That sounds so. like so much fun. Yeah. Well, on the show today, we've actually been sharing our favorite moments from the Friday Zone. Uh. And I have to ask Gabby what's your favorite moment oh there's so many but I have to say the zoo was definitely had some of my most memorable moments we got a chance to see so many different things and we got up close and personal with many of the wild animals but some were a little too close for comfort for me what the viewers at home didn't see was my close encounter with a llama <sighs> as we were setting up for the next scene uh, at the zoo a llama got behind me and started chewing on my hair 
maybe whispering some sweet nothings. So, <laughs> I mean, as you can imagine, I just didn't know what to do. And that was probably one of my most memorable moments. That's kind of crazy because actually I didn't even notice that that happened until we got to see that footage. Seems it really was, funny. but It was really <laughs> funny, but a little bit terrifying. But still, my number one favorite moment was when we had Dr. Kaboom in the studio to show us his own brand of science. His air cannon experiment is still my favorite moment. Why don't you at home take a look? We're going to do one of my favorite toys, which is also easy to make at home. I have bought this one called the air cannon. So tell us more about this air cannon you speak of, doctor. Yeah, <laughs> well here, it's one of my favorite things. It is using air uh, on the air cannon to demonstrate the power of the air, the force of the air uh, when we move it. So here I have the 55 gallon drum mm -hmm. with a hole cut in the center mm -hmm. on uh, a simple shower curtain on the back side. So I need uh, the volunteer. Gabby, excellent. <laughs> Gabby, get in. <laughs> Hide and seek. <laughs> yeah. Nine. No, I tell you, the girls <laughs> never try to get in the air cannon. <laughs> Boys, every time. <laughs> Gabby, my dear, you will stand up straight, please. Feet together, hands at the side. You will bend over the waist on place. Uh, they shake the hair in front of the face. Stand up straight, put the hair in front of the face. Perfect. When well, we shall demonstrate the power of the air. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's much more stronger than you're expecting. Now, we make it a little bit more interesting. I tell you what we do. Gabby, my dear, you take the cup. Yes. Would you balance the cup on your head, please? Okay. Uh, that looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha. Perfect. Oh, oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. Air. I don't know. Don't uh, don't mind the dripping. It's just backwash. Oh no! Oh, no, I fool you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more fun. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Now. <laughs> The niftiest thing about the air cannon is there's a better name for it. It is actually an air vortex generator. Ooh. Yeah. Now, it is a little bit difficult to understand what I'm talking about because we cannot see what is happening because I'm firing air. Mm -hmm. So, to make it a lay explanation a little bit better, I'm going to make it so we can see the air. Here, I have the simple Halloween fog machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when I hit on the end of the air cannon, I am moving the air through the cannon at high speed. Mm -hmm. When the air hits the hole in the center, the air in the center does not uh, hit anything. It continues to move at high speed. The air on the edges hits the edge of the hole. It is slowed down. It is twisted around upon itself all the way around, making what we call the air vortex. All right. Oh. Whoa, that's pretty oh. awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually now really my awesome friend, that is it's very, very easy to make and there's lots of fun to play with, yeah? That air cannon was very cool. Now let me show you you can make one of your own at home. You will need a cardboard cylinder. An old oatmeal container works perfectly. Um, you're going to need some scissors, a roll of duct tape, and a sandwich bag, uh, roughly about this size. Big enough so that, uh, you know, the the opening, the, the opening so, yeah. of your oatmeal container uh, will be covered by it. So, okay, so what started. you can do is, yeah, if we get started here, you're going to take off the lid, and uh, basically what you're going to do is the first step is you are going to cut out a little hole on the bottom side of it. So it kind of looks something like this, right? Here. Yeah. Where is that? Oh, right there, yeah. Not too big. I would say a little bit bigger than a quarter. Yeah. All right. Probably about that. So, um, and you can decorate your container as we've done uh, with, so with multicolored tape or paper or really whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, stickers, stamps, <laughs> markers. I feel like anything would work, but we, we like the rainbow effect, as yeah. you can tell. Friday yes. Zone is into colors. Exactly. You are getting that circle done so easily. <laughs> Working on it. So then, okay, so the next step is going to be that you are going to take... Uh, you're going to cut one half of your sandwich bag um, off, and oh, you're going to... All right. And on the bottom end, you are going to put the plastic on top so that it covers the opening. Oh, and then you want to tape around, And then right? you're going to want to duct tape Just around like it. But you want to make sure that it's airtight. So do you want to... I would love to help you. <laughs> and especially if you're using scissors or tape at home, this is probably definitely. a two-person craft, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely be careful. Ooh. All right, let's start this. Okay. Yes, and it has to be 
perfectly airtight in order for the experiment to work. All right. This is a two-person job yes. for its airtight quality. Dr. Kaboom <laughs> would be very impressed. Yes, I think he would. Woo! We managed to get pleased. that taped, I think. Let's snip yes. this. And obviously ask for assistance from your parents if you are using yes. scissors or anything Especially because you're going to be cutting through thicker cardboards. So. You think that's good? Yeah. All right. That's good. So here in the zone, we have a fog mas machine. So we can actually, you can see the air in, uh, this is of course demonstrating an air vortex. Um, so we are going to go ahead and we're going to fill this, this up. This is my favorite part of the experiment with Dr. Kaboom. Oh, I okay. can see it. Oh my goodness. And we can see little rings of fog. Through the fog, you can. Do you see that? Look. Well, ladies, what have we got here? Oh, that looks <laughs> wonderful. Well, if you're wondering how an air vortex works, uh -huh. tap we that have little plastic piece. Go for Just it. Like Do it, Taylor. You can. <gasps> <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's so neat. How many can you get out? Ah, oh, it does demonstrate yeah. exactly how powerful Perfect. the so, air vortex can be. So, yeah. Dr. Gabby, how does this work? Yes. Um, well, there is an air vortex involved. Uh -huh. I know that much. And the it's wind actually really spins around on the edge of the circle. So what you see is a ring when it's when uh, the pressure is. Oh, and it's release. a perfect looking ring, I have to yes. admit. Well, awesome. we want to encourage you at home to stay connected with your friends and family. And you might try out some new ways to connect, like video, chat, or video blogs. You can look at the messages from Katie Sullivan and my bearded brother Chad with your parents <laughs> if you check us out on Facebook. Remember that social networks and technology help us to stay close to people, but nothing beats a visit from an old friend. Right, Gabby? Yep. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Remember, if you want to contact us, write to us about your experiences and discoveries at www.fridayzone.org. You can download this and other episodes of The Friday Zone on iTunes for free. Can you say our last line with us? Remember yes. to live, live learn, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone way. way. See you right here next week. Goodbye. All right, let's keep playing with this. Keep playing. Yeah. I wanna, can we fill this one up, too? Yeah. I, I want to fill this one up. Help me out. Okay. <laughs> you, and the that that nicest that part? Yeah, I think so. Watch. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.